Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain. And if you are planning to take a cruise around the Mediterranean this summer, you are in luck. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to the people that supported the channel by buying merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, some good news for cruise enthusiasts here in Spain. And it is that Spain will once again welcome international cruise ships from June the 7th, almost a year after they were banned. Spain will allow international cruise ships to dock in its ports from the 7th of June, almost a year after their prohibition, according to the resolution of the Directorate General of the Merchant Navy published this Saturday in the official State Gazette. As specified in a statement by the Ministry of Transport, Mobility and Urban Agenda, this decision is justified by the favourable evolution of the pandemic in European territory, from where most of the passengers of international cruise ships calling at Spanish ports come from, the increase in the population vaccinated against COVID-19, and the decrease in the incidence rate in those communities with ports susceptible to receiving this type of vessel. So, June the 7th is the day that international cruise ships will be allowed back in Spain after nearly a year of being banned. And I don't know about you, but I definitely won't be getting on a cruise ship anytime soon, especially given the problems that cruise ships had last year around the world. And I read as recently as last week that there was a problem with a cruise ship in Palma de Mallorca with various crew members testing positive for COVID-19. But as we saw, according to the government, the health situation is favourable, and that is why they are welcoming this type of vessel again. Now, there could be some good news on the horizon for the islands here in Spain, the Balearic Islands and the Canary Islands, as apparently the UK is considering putting them on the green list. As we can see from this headline, the UK wants to exclude the Canaries and Balearics from its list of risk destinations, but not the rest of Spain. Despite the requests of the Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez and the Secretary of State for Tourism Fernando Valdés, the UK does not seem to be considering, at least for the time being, including Spain on its green list of safe destinations in the review schedule for June the 7th. It is considering the possibility, according to various British media reports, of applying the protocol to those islands with which the UK has direct flights, that is the Balearic and Canary Islands. So the Balearics and Canaries could be added to that UK green list, but what about the rest of the country? No talk about that. And one popular British tourist destination here in Spain, Benidorm, has decided to appeal directly to Boris Johnson. As we can see here, come on Boris, the montage asking for the return of British to Benidorm that is triumphing on social networks. Benidorm, the hammock straw message on the completely empty beach with its unmistakable first line of skyscrapers in the background. Come on Boris, or in Spanish, vamos Boris. The montage, the work of comedian Pablo Bloom, emphasises one of the main uncertainties for the national tourist sector this summer. When will the United Kingdom finally add Spain to its green travel list? And here we can see an aerial image of that message to Boris. And I read in another publication that things are still tough in Benidorm, with only 30% of hotels there deciding to open. So come on, Boris, mate, give Benidorm a chance. Now, as I mentioned the other day, the AstraZeneca vaccine is the vaccine of choice for people here in Spain who had their vaccine vaccinations interrupted by government regulation. As we can see from this headline, those vaccinated with AstraZeneca prefer to repeat the second dose. I feel safer not mixing vaccines. 87% in Galicia, 90% in Murcia and 99% in Andalusia. These are some of the figures for the under 60s who opted for AstraZeneca's second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine last week. Although the data is still very preliminary, they suggest that this vaccine is proving to be the preferred option for many over the Pfizer vaccine recommended by the government. This is the case of Maria, a worker at an educational centre in Madrid's Bayecas neighbourhood. I chose AstraZeneca, she said. It gives me more security not to mix. The studies are very preliminary and I prefer to continue with the pattern set so far. So people clearly not listening to the recommendations of the government when it comes to choosing that second dose. And as I also said the other day, AstraZeneca is winning hands down. But there's a problem and it is that apparently there are just not enough doses of AstraZeneca to go around. And that is causing headaches for the government, but it serves them right. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain. We can see the 
accumulated incidence rate for the last 14 days, now down to 124. There are currently 4,813 people with COVID hospitalised around the country, and there are 1,426 COVID patients in ICUs. When it comes to Spain's vaccination campaign, we can see that 18.55% of the population are completely vaccinated. In other words, some 8.8 .8 million people and 37.32% of the population have received at least one dose or just under 18 million people. And it looks as though I will be added to that statistic sometime next week or maybe the week after, as people I know with a similar age to me have already been called up. Now, as we have seen, the Spanish economy is starting to recover. Various sectors are starting to get back to pre-pandemic numbers. And one of the main sectors that is going through a boom at the moment is the restaurant sector. And this is because more Spaniards are choosing to eat out after the end of the state of alarm. In the last two weeks, sales at national restaurants and entertainment venues have soared to above pre-pandemic levels. After more than a year of pandemic, households were anxious to begin to return to normality. Although the health situation has not been resolved, the end of the state of emergency caused citizens to go out en masse. And although images of illegal parties and street drinking parties have dominated the news, the reality is that restaurants, bars and entertainment venues have been the real protagonists, with turnover soaring thanks to the reopening and the end of many of the restrictions. So there we go, the restaurant industry here in Spain experiencing a boom at the moment now that the restrictions have gone away and don't Spanish people love to eat out? And I must admit that it is something that I love to do in this country. Now, we mentioned last week a study that was published showing the different income levels around the country, what people earn on average here in Spain. And we saw that there were some huge differences depending on where you are in the country. As we can see here, the big gap in Spanish income, up to 21,000 euros difference between the richest and the poorest municipality. The Urban Indicators 2021 study published last Wednesday by the National Statistics Institute has revealed the economic inequality between cities and municipalities in the south of the country, Madrid and the north of Spain. Specifically, of the 50 municipalities with the lowest incomes, 32 are in Andalusia, followed by Murcia with 6, the Canary Islands with 4, Valencia with 3, Alicante 2, Albacete 1, Badajoz 1 and Ciudad Real 1. The study includes 416 cities with more than 20,000 inhabitants. So of the 50 municipalities in Spain with the lowest incomes, 32 are located in Andalusia. No comment. Now we'll finish the news today with a positive story, and it is that a former Prince guitarist has fallen in love with the Costa de Morte. My creativity here is at its highest, he says. For him, everything in Murcia is a source of inspiration. The sound of the sea, the grey of the stones, even a plate of octopus with a tray of peppers. This fishing village in Acoruña has unleashed the creative vein of Miko Weaver. The former Prince guitarist for almost a decade has found in this spot on the Galician coast a refuge, a haven of peace and tranquility, to give free rein to his chords. Everything here is energy, he admits. Miko discovered Mushia almost by chance. He arrived as just another pilgrim after watching the film The Way and walking more than 800 kilometres from France to Santiago de Compostela. So there we go, and good to see that Prince's former guitarist has found his spot in the northwest of Spain, and that is a very, very lovely part of the country indeed. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Steve, flew into Spain on Tuesday, no problems at all, no stress pain wearing face masks walking around but not too much. We don't need to isolate for two weeks going home, it's 10 days, but if you pay for an extra test, you can be released after five days. Well worth it in my view. Yes, yeah, Steve, thanks for the comment and good to see that you have finally made it to Spain, even though you have to quarantine on return to the United Kingdom. But as you said there, if you get an extra test, you can cut that down to five days. And good to see that the face mask rule is not bothering you too much. It is a bit of a pain, I know, but it is what we have to do in this country. But as we have seen recently, face mask wearing outdoors is a debate that they are currently having in the country. And with a bit of luck, it might be dropped in the near future. Here's hoping. One here from Arcangela. My husband and I are traveling from the US to our second home in Spain soon. We plan to stay for a month flying from JFK, Madrid, Granada. We will let you know how the trip went and we'll continue to watch your updates while in Spain. Thanks for keeping us informed. Yeah, Kanjula, thanks for the comment and thanks for watching the videos and good luck with your trip from New York to Granada. Please keep us posted on your experiences traveling to Spain this year because I know there are a lot of people in North America who are keen to know what the experience will be like. So I'll keep an eye out for your comments. One here from Matt Cat. Nice to see you doing your report outside on a sunny day. 
enjoy. My wife and I, both in our mid-60s and reasonably fit, got our AstraZeneca shots here in Oz and I had no reaction whatsoever. My wife, on the other hand, had a mild headache for a few hours and a sore arm at the injection spot for a few days. Make of our experience what you will. Re-lockdowns, we are now into our fourth lockdown for seven days here in Melbourne. Mutating virus strains, people's doubt over the safety, efficacy of different versions, or even necessity of the various versions, outright disbelief of the virus's existence, and fuss the cluck of the vaccine rollout and contact tracing will ensure that we are nowhere near over the whole mess this virus is creating, and won't be for a long while. Yeah, Mac, thanks for the comment, and thanks for telling us about you and your wife's experience with the AstraZeneca vaccine. And sorry to hear that you guys down there in Melbourne are now in your fourth lockdown. Who would have thought? And you're right, this whole pandemic has been a crazy experience over the last 12 months or so. And you could be right, but hopefully you are not, that this virus could be around for a long time to come. Time will tell. One here from Kirk. Hi, Stuart. We are planning to visit soon to visit a sick relative. Part of the issue in travelling from the UK is that we need a negative COVID test to re-enter the UK. Can you advise where to book a COVID test while in Spain? Thanks for all the info. Good work. Yeah, Kirk, thanks for the comment and sorry to see that your relative is not well, hence your trip to Spain. When it comes to getting PCR tests done in this country, it's not difficult. I suggest you go to the internet once here and find out where the place closest to you is that you can get one done. They normally cost between 90 and 120 euros, so that's a bit of an expense, but I don't think you're going to have any trouble finding a place to do that test. But as I said, once here, a quick Google search, and you should be able to find a local place to get the test done. One here from Claire, lovely to see your garden, Stuart. It looks really good. What is the plant with the pink flowers behind you when you do your videos, please? Thanks for all your hard work compiling your videos. Interesting to hear what you have to say, and then read the variety of comments that are left by the viewers. Keep up the good work. Yeah, Claire, thanks for the comment, and glad to see that you like the garden. It's changed a little bit in recent times, after the snowstorm that we had earlier in the year, when a lot of the bigger plants that I have here were destroyed. They're regrowing again, which is good news. I think I showed that the other day in a video, that there is a bit of regrowth with some of those plants that were damaged by that snowstorm. And I'm quite happy with the way the garden is looking at the moment. And when it comes to this plant here, which I imagine is the one that you were talking about, that is a geranium, geranio in Spanish. And I have three or four different geraniums with different colored flowers scattered around the garden. And finally, one here from Javier. It seems ridiculous to me that I needed three PCR and 10 days of quarantine to enter the UK, but if I wanted to return to Spain, I wouldn't need a single test. Yeah, Javier, thanks for the comment and welcome to the club. I also find it ridiculous that you can travel to Spain at the moment with no vaccination required, no PCR test needed. Yet to go the other way and return to the UK, you need to go into self-isolation for 10 days and have various PCR tests. Then also, if you want to travel from the UK to Germany, you have to quarantine as well. But as we know, Spain is different. They need tourists. And that is one of the reasons why it's so easy for people from the UK to travel to Spain at the moment. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. Have a great Sunday. Hasta luego.